All right, guys, a ghostwriter on TikTok who wrote 29 number one songs. Guys, I've been listening to, like, some, uh, you know, Drake's album uh, yesterday, so it's, like, a uh, YouTube algorithm, algorithm's been, like, promoting, um, just, like, more music-related stuff. Ooh, n nice new follower on uh, Instagram. All right, guys, who is this guy? Who is this guy? Ghostwriter on TikTok who wrote 29 number one songs. Let's check it out. <clears throat> Excuse me has written and or produced some of the biggest records of the past 15 years. 29 of those reaching number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Love Yeesh. Yourself by Justin Bieber, Perfect by Ed Sheeran, I Dang. Kissed a Girl by Katy Perry, Diamonds by Rihanna, Moves Like Jagger, and many, many more. She rolling up diamonds. The year is 2004. A 16 year old named Benjamin is cold calling record labels trying to show them some music, but they keep slamming the phone down before he- Dang it. In 2004, I was not 16, guys. <laughs> I was a lot younger. This guy's like 40, bro. Hey, bro. I mean, he had the claim to fame. He had the claim to fame, bro. Like, when he was 16, I guess? He can finish his sales pitch. Benjamin has to get creative. He goes online, scrolling hundreds of sketchy and unreliable websites, trying to get the phone numbers of important people in the music industry. This is before Google had all the right answers. He discovers Jay Z's lawyer's phone number. He <laughs> guys, well, dedicated guy. This is the second story where we just see another dedicated guy uh, for like the music industry in a row. That just you know. Is dedicated, bro. And I, I like their passion, bro. I, I, I commend them, bro. Le legit. This guy has the right idea, man. Instead of going out and hurting others, he's doing, uh, you know, just trying to make good music. Or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Ghostwrite, I guess. I mean, this guy, this guy's like freaking... Doing what I kind of wanted to do, bro. Just, you know. He's kind of like the faceless guy who uh, just made a bunch of money, bro. And that's what I always wanted to do, but... Either way, I'm fine with showing my face, but not always. Um, yeah, guys, he's like... Uh, with all the songs this, he's written, he's like, you know, changing the... Um, the collective conscious of the world, for lack of a better term. Which is something I used to like majorly, majorly uh <laughs> research, guys. Okay, let's go. He calls and says there's a pressing matter that the CEO needs to address immediately. He gets sent through to the lawyer, but there was no issue. He just wanted to show him some of the music he made. Who cares about pride? Just keep calling someone until they answer. <laughs> I wish I could tell you this is how he made his big break, but Benjamin Levin, aka Benny Blanco, doesn't actually belong in the music industry. Unfortunately, a lot of success stories in music involve taking advantage of people, being manipulative, and really using others as a stepping stone for you to get to the next level. The only other way is to be in the right place at the right time, along with having a massive amount of talent. You will come to realize that Benny, time and time again, ended up in rooms with massive stars almost accidentally. 1993, Benny is a five-year-old who is obsessed with music. He has an old boombox and a couple of Nas tapes. He starts singing. Then hey, bro. So there's some that were just obsessed with, obsessed with music growing up and some that were obsessed with video games. By the time he was growing up, video games weren't really uh, in their handheld state, guys. Uh, maybe they were. Growing up in the 1980s, guys? There's more music than uh, video games, though. For, that's for sure than making beats on tables, pots and pans, hitting them with his hands. He messes around with the record function, layering recordings of his table beats and adolescent vocals, literally producing his first creations like a young prodigy. At age nine, he won a music competition through his school that allowed him to work in a real- Another young prodigy, guys. Well, thankfully we have the potential to, you know, become young prodigies with uh, video games, because that's what I'm all about. Even though it's mostly been reacting nowadays, guys. I've just been a reactor. Sorry guys, my arm hurts. Okay. Studio. He recorded his first rap song called Easy Life. 
After Easy the session, life. Benny knew where the rest of his life was headed. The obsessive tween spent all of his free time making raps inspired by Eminem, and he would experiment with beat making. Every summer, he went to a Jewish sleepaway camp called Mount Airy, showing his friends what he had been working on all year. He even met his present day manager there when he was just eight years old. His older brother, hey, Jeremy, who absolutely adored Benny and wanted him to be Hey, bro, you met his manager already? be successful, was in his freshman year at the University of Delaware and would bring Benny up to his fraternity to perform at parties. Benny was about 13 at the time. One of Jeremy's fraternity brothers, Sam, was an aspiring musician himself, and I'm guessing he was a little bit music industry connected, because he had access to a nice studio, which I'm assuming was in New York City, and very shortly after this, Benny's rapping caught the attention of The Source magazine and Columbia Records. Before the internet, A&Rs had to be in the know with local musicians. Word of mouth was everything. And knowing a guy who knows a guy was basically the only way to get attention. Because shortly after- Hey bro, th this must be before smartphones can send text messages instantly, but it's still kind of the same, guys. That's how I met my first girlfriend, guys. And my friend knew a guy who had a sister. After Benny met Sam, he got noticed by Jonathan Schechter, founder of The Source magazine. Jonathan paid 13-year-old Benny $500 to make a couple of beats for a softcore porn DVD series he started called Hip Hop Honeys. Benny would slow down on his <laughs> rapping from here on out and focus said, on- dime pieces, well. <laughs> I grew up in the 90s a little bit, so I do know about seeing stuff like that, but now those things are totally freaking uh, taken out, bro. It, 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 they totally got a exchange for like instead being like what is it um i forgot guys forgot oh yeah just like websites <laughs> on production. Throughout high school, Ben made as many five-hour bus trips to New York as possible. Luckily, he had his grandmother in East Orange, New Jersey to stay with. Keeping his few music industry connections close and attending as many meetings as possible, he was just begging for more music work. When he was back home in Virginia, he did the cold calls to the record labels. And then on the internet, he was trying to find Jimmy Iovine's email. He added anyone on MySpace who maybe could have had some music industry connections. Grinding- Guys, we gotta watch like a- uh video essay on this tom guy because we do not know what happened to the tom guy the the guy who made uh, myspace or whatever to even see another sliver of music industry work one day he gets an email response from a brooklyn dj named disco d he said i'm leaving for brazil next week and you're going to come and fill the studio for me if you book someone to work at the studio every day of the week you're hired and benny had that studio booked <laughs> the entire time disco d there we go fam there we go finally get his big break Let's go. He wanted to keep him around. Benny graduated high school and attended the Institute of Audio Research in New York to be closer to D. Disco D became a mentor to Benny, and he pushed him to be the best he could be. He would delete his projects mid-session, erase his completed works, and throw his CDs in the trash, forcing him to start over and get better. He pushed Benny to be more interesting, more experimental, and take more musical risk. Disco D- Bro, I'd be pretty pissed if somebody threw my stuff away like that, man. He said, he said your, your stuff is not good enough. Straight up, man. Okay, okay. He tragically passed away in 2007 by suicide. In his honor, Aww. Benny stepped away from hip-hop and dove into more experimental sounds. Benny wanted to work with D's good friend Naeem, aka Spankrock. This is where the Bangers and Cash EP was born. Although the EP was experimental and a little left of center, they got picked up by the label Downtown Records. After a little bit of media coverage, local buzz, and industry buzz from the Bangers and Cash EP, a woman by the name of Marav from Songs Publishing reached out to Benny. She wanted to offer him his first publishing deal. It was in mid-2007 where opportunities started coming his way. The days of him begging for music industry work are about to be long gone. The Yay. publishing deal with Marav fell through, but she decided to introduce Benny to Dr. Luke, who's one of Thanks, so everybody wasn't born into uh, instant success, it seems, guys. Like, everybody worked for it. That's what it's starting to look like. Um, it seems to be only if you're only, only if you're born into, like, um, Uh, like a, a a celebrity's like a kid or something would would you be um born into it guys 
20, 2022, officers conducted a stop on a vehicle. Suspect Oops, I'm sorry, that's a different video. Songwriters and producers <laughs> that's and a video in the future. I apologize, guys. I have two monitors, so. In the early 2000s, working on songs like Since You've Been Gone, Right Round by Flo Rida, Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne, the list goes on. Benny has one meeting with Dr. Luke, in which he thinks goes terrible. I met him, I thought he didn't like me, <laughs> and then like, turns out he did. And Luke asks him to make music with him that weekend. Luke then introduces him to Max Martin, who has wrote tons of iconic songs. And then he immediately gets thrown into a writing session with Britney Spears. Because I never made pop music. I didn't know anything about pop music, really. Bro, oh, Britney Spears, guys? Oh, so he writes a song together with the artist. I did not know that. So some guy who was just making niche booty bounce club rap and knows nothing about pop music gets introduced to two songwriting legends and after one meeting gets thrown into rooms with massive pop stars. Why? I don't know. I guess they saw something in Benny. Maybe they could just see his potential beyond what a typical person can see. Maybe they I mean, with the amount of- since, since a kid he's been making music, just like the other. Um... They just liked his personality. We can't really say why they initially believed in him, but they were clearly right about him considering how his career went. Can you just double check and make sure you're subscribed? Wouldn't hurt to like the video and maybe take a sip of water as well. Benny became essentially an apprentice for Dr. Luke and Max Martin. He was in the real deal music industry now, writing and producing for Katy Perry and Britney Spears. He's just there walking next to Katy Perry and stuff. Oh my gosh, what a big shot, man. What a big shot. And just when you think the story is going to be that he rode the coattails of Luke and Max for the rest of his career, he did something else. You see, Benny still had to prove himself. Yes, he was in the rooms with big artists, but he wasn't running the show by any means. He was a student, essentially. He used the things he learned from these guys and implemented them on artists that he was collaborating with on the side. He so he's like, uh, I forgot what it meant. I got stumbled into I a got, session. I got, uh, Memory loss right now. I apologize, guys. ...with an electronic duo called 303 to help them with a song. But then they came up with an entirely new idea. And in a drunken soiree, they ended up making the biggest songs that 303 would ever make. Benny was still much more into weird electronic indie music than pop. So 303 was the perfect duo for him. The song Don't Trust Me would hit number seven on the Billboard Hot 100. I totally, I totally forgot 303 was a, an artist until I saw this picture right here, man. <laughs> I was like, what was... And this was Benny's most successful song that he didn't work on with Luke and Martin. He was a great addition to Luke and Martin's production team, but he also just proved that he can make hits without them. Now he was a force to be reckoned with. Him and Katy Perry hit it off, so they were working on more music. Dr. Luke signed Kesha, and Benny wrote and or produced literally all of her popular songs. He worked with Tayo Cruz and wrote all of his big songs, basically. Stereo I don't know who that is though. Video Hearts by Gym Class Heroes, Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5, No Sleep by Wiz Khalifa. I mean, 2009 to 2011, the billboard was flooded. Okay, that No Sleep song, I do know though, guys. I do. That's like one of his most viewed songs, man. Flooded with songs that Benny either wrote or produced. And he was just 23 years old. By 2012, he was getting press coverage and interviews, and word was out that Benny Blanco is a music industry songwriter and producer you need to know. He was able to get a little bougie from here. First of all, I don't work with anyone who's not my friend. Once you make a name for yourself, you get to move like a boss. Benny decided he's only gonna work with people who he has a genuine connection with. You see, Benny attributes most of his success to him being a good hang. For me, when I'm producing a record, your only job in the studio is to keep a good vibe and be a good therapist. That's it. That's your only job. If you can make the artist feel comfortable enough to spill out what they want or at least tell you what they want, then you did your job. This makes sense. In the industry, you will constantly find yourself in rooms where you don't know everyone. There's an intern, some random manager in the corner, maybe even people in the room that secretly want to see you fail. I don't know. So if you have someone goofy and silly like Benny... Hey bro, that's, that's life though. Let me spit. You can relax, let go of unnecessary stresses and reach your true creative potential. I got a shit. That was the email that Benny sent to Ed Sheeran before they became best friends. If mm -hmm. someone types I got a shit on an email after not responding for four days, 99% of people are not going to respond to your emails ever again. But it just so happens that one person thought it was hilarious, and Ed Sheeran and Benny would end up making some of their- Got a kiss from Ed Sheeran, guys. Well biggest works together and then obviously ed sharon became like the biggest pop star in the world <laughs> kanye west oh, oh you forgot about taylor swift though you forgot about taylor swift that's still one of the biggest pop stars man 
and Benny Blanco. Reborn was the track they did together, which is actually my personal favorite on the project. This collab wouldn't have happened. I don't really listen to that many Kanye songs, so literally, I'm, I apologize, Kanye fans. I just did not. I, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, did my dues and uh, sat there and listened to an album. I apologize, guys. Happened without Benny doing some free work for an artist named Francis and the Lights. And then I make records with Francis and the Lights. And, and, and <clears throat> you know, with the Francis album, I did that album for free because I thought it was incredible. He moved into my house. I, he was one of my favorite artists I ever seen. And because you do things because you feel and, you be, and because of the art and because you're doing it for culture, yeah. doing that, got me in with some of my favorite artists in the world because people respected the music that I was doing with Francis. It's like, I got to work with Bon Iver because of Francis. I got to work with Kanye West because of Francis. You know, The Weeknd hit me up because of Francis. Just like the Spank Rock EP in 2007, working and, and I don't even know who Francis is, guys. I don't. With Francis and the Lights, just for the love of music is actually what got him to the next level in his career. Because by 2008, Benny had worked with literally every big star you can name. Bieber, Selena, Halsey, Khalid, Juice World. I mean, the only people left are Kanye and Drake. Still hasn't worked with Drizzy. The main difference between Benny and every other songwriter is that he is actually pretty publicly famous. Most songwriters are these hidden people in the background of the music industry that have all the secret sauce and they quietly craft all the hits that you and I absorb. <laughs> Benny has a great personal brand. In 2018, he started openly collaborating with people as an artist and executive producer rather than a songwriter. Then in 2020, he started Bro. a successful YouTube series with his friend Maddie Matheson. He even started his real... Wait, what title did he give himself? New assignee. YouTube series with his friend Maddie Matt. Producer extraordinaire. Matheson. He even started <laughs> taking a, a bat together, eating spaghetti. Started his real Hollywood acting career in the show Dave. But he had been making appearances in various music videos over the years, so being in front of the camera wasn't exactly new to him. But of course, TikTok is the big reason for all of this. <laughs> Benny has basically just made viral TikTok after viral TikTok, just simply stating all of the songs he wrote while they play in the background. Alone at my house and don't really know how to do this trend, but I made the song 2010, so it's Winning over Gen Z with that round face, poofy hair, and infectious smile. He's just very likable. Benny can make it seem like being a successful artist is this magical process where you make something really nice and everyone hears it and agrees it's great and says, wow, we should promote this for you and we all get really rich. And it may be that way for him now, but you need a lot of work ethic and honestly, a lot of luck. Time and time again, he had opportunities just fall into his lap, but Benny is very smart and very talented. So when Bro started his career when he was a kid. So did I with the video games, though. I was using the video got age restrictions, ads removed, pain. And he ain't a TikToker, he's a producer. I know, right? But TikTok did help him. It did help him grow. His inspiration, he is. Shout out Benny guys, hopefully we can get to his level, um, maybe he's a little bit too successful though. <laughs> See you guys next video, okay. Benny, Benny is uh, a freaking huge, huge uh, writer bro, like, look at, the, look at the stuff he's holding bro. Shout out Benny guys.